very good, good evening to all of you. First of all, I should thank the organizers and the IME office bearers for giving me the opportunity to talk on this because I thought instead of uh, um, presenting an X-ray, interesting X-rays, that is the commonest one which you come across in the day-to-day -day practice is the knee pain. If you take a children or adult or the older patients, definitely that knee X-ray is the basic one which they will all come if you take uh, 100 patients. 70 patients will have this knee pain. So what is happening is, because I'm working in a medical college, uh, the exactly even the consultant, so many consultants, they are permitting this uh, normal X-rays straight away. They last for MRI and all. I thought I'll show you the uh, knee pain, the X-ray findings. What we can observe it in that. So the commonest indication, that is what the patients will come for our clinic also, is the inability to walk or the knee injury, knee pain that occurs at night or while resting, knee pain that persists beyond a few days, locking, the inability to bend the knee, the swelling of the joint or the calf area, Signs of an infection including fever, redness, warmth, or any other unusual symptoms in the knee. So better first you take this knee x-ray. Now the digital x-rays have come. See olden days when I was a student and all we used to take the x-rays. But now the digital x-ray, so the clarity of the x-ray has improved a lot. You can see this soft tissues, lower end of the femur and the contour of the uh, lateral condyle, medial condyle, superimposition is the patella. This is the patella and uh, this is the joint space and uh, this is the lateral uh, joint space, medial joint space, tibial uh, spine, tibial spine and uh, this is the upper end of the fibula joint and the upper end of the tibia. So this is the notch. So, Usually, whenever the x-ray is taken, this is what the medical teaching is, we'll take a lateral view also, AP and lateral view. So the lateral view also, you arrive for that, that soft tissue, this is the patella, patellofemoral joint space, this is the lower end of the femur, and the upper end of the tibia, and this is the normal infrapatella region, and you can see the fat planes are very clearly seen here, and this is the fibula, and that is that usually we'll ask for it. And if necessary, we'll take a one more x-ray. If you are suspecting something in the patella, when you are examining it, if you see there is a patella, chondromalacia patella, or patella fracture, if you are suspecting it, you see the superior surface. We'll flex the knee and then take a surface for this axial view of the patella. This we call it as an axial view of the patella. Soft tissue, patella triangular shape one, the joint space is maintained, the patella surface of the femur, medial femoral condyle and the lateral femoral condyle. That is what we will see it in this axial view of the X-ray. Coming to this pediatric, see this is the uh, epiphyseal line. It is not fused. Don't mistake it for a fracture that one that up to 14, 15 years, this will be seen in all the x-rays. This is the epiphyseal line which has not yet fused. That is the pediatric x-ray. And uh, here is a patient with a seven-year-old boy playing with the tenderness in the tibia. So when you are examining it in the tibial tubercle area, the tenderness is there. When you take an x-ray of that, this is the normal one where that uh, tibial tubercle which is not yet fused, but here you see this patellar tendon which is coming, that is the osteochondritis of the tibia. And the knee injury, commonest one, that is where you see this patella fracture. This is a patient one where the multiple fracture of the patella is there and the joint space between the patella and the femur has been reduced. And uh, in the lateral, translateral view, you can see this one, the patella has been broken into pieces. And here you see this, this one also, there is a effusion also is there and the bifurcated patella also seen like this. 
And here, and this is also old days and all that nutritional deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, that you can see this irregularity in pediatric age group. Irregularity is that zone of provisional calcification is increased. This is the epiphysis zone of provisional. The feathery appearance is there, cupping, fraying, splaying, and the increase of the bone of cal uh, calcification is there. So this is typical of a rickets. Generalized osteoporosis also is there and other features will be there. This is typical in olden days and all. We used to see this type of lot of cases there. There is a sclerosis of the air and the peri periosteal. This is the lot of hemorrhage has taken place. This is the typical scurvy, scurvy of the knee joint. The rickets and scurvy difference is there that the zone of provisional calcification is widened, but here it is sclerosis is there, lot of periosteal hemorrhages will be there, subperiosteal elevation will be there in scurvy, whereas in rickets it will not be there. And here is a patient, this is an adult patient, bilateral knee pain, locking sensation while walking, this is common. So when we took an x-ray, x-ray shows multiple uh, lot of round round lesions in that. This is typical of a synovial chondromatosis and the joint space is reduced, irregularity is there and the multiple, this is a typical large, large lesions is there, this is a synovial chondromatosis. And uh, surfaces also will be there. See, when we took this bilateral knee pain, okay, locking sensation while walking. So carefully look at that, here is a loose body is there, in between the two condyles of the femur, that is when you flex it, sometimes it will go in and, and then cause the locking. So when you are observing that one, uh, that worm calcification also is seen that that is also incidentally we found out in this case. So this is the locking needle, commonest is the loose body, that osteophyte which will break from the bone and then go into the joint space, cause this locking. This is also multiple, multiple loose bodies are there in the, in the joint space. Here also, this is also like, uh, knee pain. Sorry. Here also knee pain. You see the joint space is so much reduced. But this case definitely you have to do an MRI to find out the cartilage under the cruciate ligament. What has happened to that one? So this is the indication after preliminary screening with this X-ray. You can go for the higher modality like a MRI. And here also you see this this one. There is a chip of fracture is there and also there is a reduction in the joint space on the medial aspect that is causing this uh, pain for him and the pain. And the ossification, see this is the normal one that is the medial collateral ligament. But here you see this is the ossification at the insertion or uh, uh, towards the femoral condyle area, that is one lesion is there, they will, this will also cause sometimes a pain. And a severe osteoarthritis, you see the deformity of the bone. This is the normal bone, that's a joint space on medial and lateral one, but whereas it is a, 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 a decreased and the petalofemoral joint space, lot of that, this is typical severe osteoarthritis. And a loss of uh, joint space, this one, this is the normal one osteoarthritis of the knee and for that they will go for the total replacement. So this is the total replacement appearance of the chest, uh, knee x-ray. And sometimes surprises will be there. So when you take an x-ray, you see this uh, so bubble appearance, typical multi-loculated one, expansile one, that is the GCT or the ABC, that is the tumor of the lower end of the uh, femur. Uh, um, cell tumor or the aneurysmal bone cysts. Here is a small uh, pediatric age group, fever, swelling and pain. This is the osteosarcoma of the lower end of the femur. Thank you.